Hello everybody, it's Sandro Stefanucci from Abstract Homes and Renovations. I'm here today with Emma Conway from E3 Eco Group. She does all the uh, uh, energy ad advising um, on houses, so I'm going to let her explain a little bit about what, what we're doing today. Well, we're here in the city of Vancouver, which has required the use of an energy advisor and lower door testing uh, since 2014. So what I do as an energy advisor is complete energy modeling of a home like this. And at mid-construction, we like to come in to do a blower vent test to see how well our air barrier approach is doing before everything is covered up. Can you, maybe people that don't understand this air barrier mm -hmm. stuff, maybe look at some expanding mm -hmm. that Absolutely. a little bit? So an air barrier is one of the four barrier systems of the home. And it's important because it helps keep the heat in. You know, you're paying to heat your home, and if you have a very air leaky home, basically that heat is escaping to the outside. We want to keep it in, so therefore our mechanical system is operating less, and your home is more efficient and saves costs. Saves costs. That's right too. So, so we're really looking at the envelope. And, you know, basically the, the coat that's on the house that covers the house and the quality. So there's different. We you know there's there's Tyvek, there's Tyvar. There's a SEGA product, right? So there's different um, air barriers that we put on the outside of the sheeting. In this particular house uh, that we're doing, we did we we opted for the SEGA air barrier. It's a um, it's a real heavy cloth material. It, it's it's way more vapor permeable, I think. But it's more it, there's more it, it's breathable as far as the exactly. other ones are concerned. It's probably some of the best in the world that's made right now. And I put it on the outside. This particular home, we put 5H tongue and groove plywood on the outside. So we did a typical balloon type uh, frame up, and then we overlapped all the um, our boxer joists with the 5H TNG, and we blocked all the horizontal seams on that. So I wanted to get an idea. Just this is like a mid mid construction blower door test to see how well that actually performed with the Sega product on there right now. So. You just did the test on here, so where are we at if you wanted to compare that to something that would be in that frame, where are we at with numbers? So in the city of Vancouver, in mid-construction, you're required to have five air changes per hour. Uh, at final, you're required to have 3.5 air changes, and today we were at three air changes. So that's even better than what's required at final. So I would definitely go ahead and say you're doing a very good job. And it's only going to get better from here. Yeah, so we, I think we just noticed there was a couple of spots that the, the air barrier wasn't, wasn't completed that we had, so there's a fair size hole in it, so, mm -hmm. and we still got it down to three. So, exactly. So it actually, I think, it's, I think if we just look at the sheathing itself, it probably helped out quite a bit in getting that number down. Absolutely. Any kind of exterior air barrier approach, it's a lot better because there's less penetrations on the outside, so you can get a much more airtight home than using traditional polyethylene interior air barrier approach. So Hot 2000 is the energy modeling software that energy advisors use and basically what we do is input all the geometry of the home, how much wall area there is, how each wall is constructed, how many roof areas they are, how that roof is constructed, um, how your foundation is constructed, and also how airtight the home is. So in the city of Vancouver for mid-construction we have to have five air changes at mid-construction to pass. So based on the interior heated volume of air, uh, we would be allowed a, an equivalent leakage area of 200 square inches of hole. What does that mean? What that means is if you were to take every hole in your air barrier and add them up into one hole, you'd be allowed to have 200 square inches. Today, when we were doing our blower fan testing, uh, we did better than that. We had about 120 square inches of hole. And using HOT 2000, I can deduce that today we had three air changes and 120 square inches of hole. That's even better than what we're allowed at final. Now, everybody says, oh, you know, like, why would you want to seal up that? Because everybody's, you know, all the guys say, like, they cut the poly, they do all kinds of these things mm -hmm. like that because they think that it, the house can't breathe. But in fact... Well, a home isn't a living thing, so right. it doesn't need to breathe, right? If you have good construction and you're not getting water into your assembly, um, you know, it doesn't need to, to dry out. We're, right. we're advanced enough now that we're building good homes that water shouldn't be getting in there in the first place. Right, so again, it would go into also the construction details. So the, the guys say, 
whoever's putting on your, your metal flashings and, and so forth, that they, they should be fairly knowledgeable on how to use that product and, and where the intersection points are, that they're not leaking through those points. That makes a big difference. So, you know, guys that are experienced that know what they're doing, because there's a whole bunch of guys out there that don't know what they're doing and they do a poor job, and that's when you have the problem of leaking inside that cavity and then causing problems later on. Yes, so so moisture is one, and then the other one why people think homes need to breathe is ventilation. And here in the city of Vancouver, we're using um, an HRV, which has 24-hour continuous supply and exhaust all throughout the home. Um, and then the other benefit of that is before you're just dumping that stale air outside, you're recovering some of that heat energy and keeping it in the home, which is another great energy efficient feature. Yeah, I really like those HRVs. They work well. Well, thanks, Emma. Yeah, no problem. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.